So what we're doing today? Well, we're starting a new project. Um, basically, we're going to make what you what you could technically call a slab pot. Now, a slab pot is a piece of pottery which is made up of one or more rolled out slabs of clay. Um, the most basic of being one. The most common being four plus. Um, but today we're going to do the most basic slab pot, which is one single solitary slab of clay, rolled out to a specific thickness and then formed to make a pot. Right, but I'll show you as we go. Right, what are you going to need? Um, well today I'm using Pebio air drying clay again. Now we'll start off with a 1.5 kilo block and we're going to use for this about a third, half a kilo, about a pound of clay. So that's what we need for that. We will also need a bowl, which is going to be our form, which we're going to form the shape over. You're going to need a rolling pin and towards the end of rolling out you're going to need something which is going to control and give you an even thickness of the clay, which I'll really show you with that when we get to it. We're also going to add some texture. Now we're going to do that by rolling the clay out on an old tea towel. Um, now you could use anything. Um, usually I would have used a piece of hessian. Um, but I can't find my hessian anywhere, so I'm using an old tea towel. And that does two things. It, in, it puts texture into the clay, but it also helps stop it sticking to your work surface. Um, because one, once it starts to stick, you can get some fantastic textures, but when you try and peel it off the work surface, it becomes really quite problematic. So we're going to roll it onto the clay, which is going to, sorry, onto the tea towel, which is going to make it easier when it comes time to forming the shape over the bowl. Now I'm not sure whether this bowl is going to be too big or not. It might be, but hope we shall see. So we're going to put this all this up to one side initially. We've got our clay. We don't need that so we'll put that off to one side. Uh, in fact if I put it into this bag now. I've started using these Ziploc bags, these freezer bags, to keep the clay conditioned until I actually start using it. But well, we're going to start using that any second, so we'll pop that into there. And we're trying to get as much of the air out as we can before we zip it up. I'm doing this because I had a block of clear core hard on the end of the day. And so again, putting that off to one side. Put these off to one side, we don't need these just yet. They're there ready to get when we need it. Right, so let's get started. So first things first, we're going to condition the clay. And basically we've gone from the square block just by pressing it in, not folding, do not fold, just by pressing, we've got it to a round. Now as you press and manipulate it, you should be able to see it feel if there's any hard spots on it. If there is, just work it a little bit until it's nice and soft, you feel it all the way through. So we've got a conditioned ball of clay. Now we're starting off with a ball, just to make things easier as we're rolling out and getting a more even slab. So I'm going to get that roughly in the middle. Try, not to try and spread it out so there's no creases. Not that it makes any difference. But this is a nice sort of toweling with a square weave type pattern. Right, so first thing we're going to do is just press it down gently. Turn it a little bit. And we'll see if you can see. Can you see the texture? That's the sort of texture we're going to get all over. Now, I haven't decided whether we're going to use the texture on the inside of the hole or the outside yet, but we shall see. Right, so, we're just going to gently 
and try and carefully roll it out and keep it round. We don't want to roll it in one direction and end up with it being an oblong. We want it nice and round. Just going to keep turning it. Now these pots, these slab pots, especially the single slab pots, are the most simplistic way and the easiest way to make something interesting. Now they're not incredibly practical in terms of balls, but you can make it an interesting display piece, which you can use as a fruit ball maybe, something like that, or as a, a sort of arty trinket ball, even just, just a decorative piece to put on a shelf. So you can really go to town decorating it. Alright, so we're just gonna keep turning it a little bit and rolling, trying to keep it round. I'll go off a little bit, but try and keep it consistently thick as well. Now we're not too bothered about the texture at the moment because we're just rolling it out. But as we get closer to the desired thickness we will then make sure we've got the texture we need. Right, so we're getting somewhere near now. Right. Right, so this is where these come in. And basically we're going to position them. They're a little bit long for this job, but we'll manage. We're going to position them either side and we're going to use them as a guide to roll the correct thickness of clay. As we roll it on and off, it will drop off the clay onto the dowling and then when it stops dropping you know that side of the clay is the right thickness. And then we'll turn it slightly and do the same again. As I, and I'm rolling away from myself, I'm not really applying any pressure when I bring it back. I'm just rolling it away to try and keep the roundness. Right, I can feel underneath we've got a nice texture going on as well. See, I'm rolling almost exclusively on the dowels now. Nice and flat. It just feels like you're not rolling on anything. Right, welcome back. Sorry about that guys, had a few technical difficulties. Right, so we're just finishing off rolling the clay. Now to all intents and purposes we have just about finished. So we're going to discard these, these guides. These are always useful to have when you're making slab pots. They generally need to be a little bit shorter, about the same length as your table. But Right, so now all we're going to do now is we're going to just tweak it a little bit. There's a few bits we're just going to gently, feeling as we go, even the whole thing out nice and gently. Um, to this stage we're finalising the texture on the back. Now I'm not going to bother trimming this up. You could if you wanted to actually trim 
this into a nice even round shape but I'm aiming for a sort of a decorative piece it's not going to be entirely fully functional um, although it will be usable the main thing is to make something for as a vehicle for decoration right so we'll put the, the rolling pin to one side um, now this rolling pin these are nice rolling pins these wooden ones and you can actually get them with, with texture but what I've found is they're not really wide enough um, I've got an 18 inch perspex tube one somewhere which is somewhere I'll find it eventually which is a much firmer much easier to use um, but these are handy to have if you're doing smaller products but anyway right, so the next job is we just yes that's, that's see that feels nice and level nice and even right so we're going to get our bowl now this is what we're going to form our bowl over so we're going to gently pull this out the way now this is why you rolling on a tea towel was a good idea because you're literally and you're not having to touch the texture so much with your fingers and you're not damaging the edges right so we're going to just gently centre it onto the ball and as we're doing that we're going to shift put it just gently ease the clear down now I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put another ball underneath this to raise the whole thing up a little bit so, yeah, so we're not quite centred right so I'll find something else to put underneath um, Close, but not quite. There we go. Now we're going for a slightly wonky, uneven shape. It's going to be higher on one side than on the other by the time we're finished. But Joe, the only thing we're going to make sure we do is that it doesn't fold underneath the edge of the former that we're using. So we just gently more or less just letting the heat of your hands without applying and putting dips in. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get a little bit more clear because this needs feet. Um, now we're not we could there's a loads of different ways we could do this. We could roll out with a sausage and put a single foot in the centre. Um, you could roll out the circle of clay, plonk that in the middle. Um, you could put, but what we're actually going to do is we're going to put individual feet onto the ball. Um, but we're only going to put three feet. Um, so we're just going to open the clay up, just going to grab a lump. don't need a great deal. But I think that's probably more than enough. And so we just wrap that back up again. Put it in the side. Make sure we get all the air out of it. And is it going to fit up? So we're aiming to create three balls, basically. Now the good thing about the air drying clay, if you were making this out of 
kiln I fired clay you would have to do all sorts of things to make sure that these were properly jointed um, now we're still going to make sure they're properly jointed but the good thing is because it's air drying clay um, if it does fall off in the drying process if each of these feet do fall off we can simply glue it back on with some super glue or with some epoxy resin or something like that um, whereas if you were using um, if you were kiln firing you'd have to wait until you'd gone through all the processes before you could actually put these feet back on now the reason why we're using three feet if you're using four you'd have to be really really careful about making sure they're perfectly placed otherwise you'd have a wobbly ball whereas if you're using three feet it becomes self-leveling right so we're just going to find out so we're going to position one about there and then oh no it's just escaped it's escaped right anyway i'll show you what we're going to do and then i shall we're just going to wet and we're just going to twiddle it until it sticks do the same again Excuse me, I'm just going to just be under the table and see if I can find this clear ball. If you see the tables, if you see the cameras wobbling, slightly off centre and slightly skew with. If one step dries that will be self levelling. It will just sit nicely. Right, so we've got our texture. We're not trimming the edges. We're going to leave them as a decorative feature. It's already starting to dry so we're just going to do any final shaping that we might want. Right, there we go. Right, so we're going to let that sit for a few hours, let it dry, and we'll come back and have a look. Right, see you soon, guys.